Welcome back fellow designers. I am back with a glow and lighting tutorial that you guys have been asking for. Unfortunately, the first time I recorded, the audio didn't go through, but I didn't want to waste the footage and re-record. So here we are with a voiceover. I'll be sure to get the audio straightened out for next time so you guys have that. But let's get right into it. I start off here and I just set up a little scene with LeBron. It's really roughly cut out and the retouch isn't fully done, but just to have something something decent to look at um, so first thing I do is I'll add another layer just to keep everything separate so it's easier to go back and change after um, you'll see that in a sec um, here I'm explaining that I have the retouch so here I add the layer and then I take a large brush zero hardness and I'll just tap once or twice depending on how you want it to look and then I'll set that to linear dodge add and that kind of gives it that lighter glowy look and you can make this literally whatever color you want as long as you're not using this on a white background because that doesn't work linear dodge add doesn't show up on white but so there's a few different ways you can do this um, I use solid color adjustment layer some people use hue saturation some people use curves I've just found solid colors the easiest. So what I'll do is I'll add a solid color layer of the same color that I used with the brush. And then I clip it to the player like this. So it covers in fully in blue. And then I set that to linear dodge add. And then just gonna control I, command I, depending on what you're on, on the mask to invert it. And so now you're just gonna paint over the uh, outside and so this part is going to be for more of a rim light um, you're going to use a very small brush again still on zero hardness um, it's just a little more forgiving than if you were to use a fully uh, hard brush a full hard brush kind of just looks like you colored with a crayon and that's not the look we're going for so basically you can see here you're just going to want to go over the very outside of the player. Now take into consideration that I'm not being extremely, extremely careful just because it is a tutorial. So take your time when you're doing this. Um, make sure you're not making the lines too thick, too thin. You wanna have a nice, even um, thickness throughout the glow. But um, as you can see here, the blue behind him is quite blue. Um, but when I get lower, you'll be able to see that it's not nearly as blue and it's leaking into the purple background. So when you get to there, um, you're going to want to fade the glow as best as you can. So what I like to do is I will um, switch colors of the mask uh, with my brush. So press X on the keyboard. You can toggle between white and black and I'll just erase. But then I might make the brush a little bit bigger so then the softness shows up a little bit more so then it's easier to kind of cut the um, line that you just made. So uh, I continue to just do this. Um, it's, it's a process, but again, anything good, uh, anything worth your time is gonna take a while. Um, I ended up speeding it up here just so you didn't have to sit here and watch me slowly do this all. Um, but as you can see, like lower towards his legs, it's less blue. So you're going to want to fade that because the light's not going to hit it quite the same as when it's nearly as intense as upwards. Um, but here on the white part, um, it might not show up as nice. Um, the inside of his arm has more of a shadow, so it shows up more, but the outside, uh, it doesn't show up quite as much, but still do it because when you get to the second part, it'll be more apparent than it is right now um so yeah i just continue to go over uh the outside get his little beard um and i promise i didn't mess up the masking on his head it's just a picture <laughs> he looks a little extra bald but that's not the point of this video um so now what we're gonna do we're gonna do step two of the glow which is kind of what makes it really look real so what you're going to do is you're going to duplicate the layer that you just had. You're going to delete that layer mask because you don't want those thin lines. And then you're just going to make a new layer mask at the bottom there. And then control I to uh, invert that selection again. And now you're going to use a much bigger brush. Still not huge, but 
as you can see, like a nice solid circle. And you're just gonna wanna go around the parts where you put the glow, the, the thin rim light glow. Um, so I'm sure you're saying this, this looks awful and you'd be right, um, but we're gonna fix that. Uh, so you're just gonna go over here. Oftentimes when you have the arms down here with like close to the jersey, it kind of looks very fake. So you see here, I'm just adjusting it to make it look a little more faded rather than just two blocks on him, uh, especially like in the armpit area because it's gonna stop right at that intersection of the arm and pit. But uh, I've seen a lot of people continue upwards. So it's kind of like over the armpit, which isn't how lighting would work. But so now, this is probably the biggest magic trick for this and a lot of people don't know about this you can either double click all the way on the right of the layer or you can go back down to effects next to layer mask like here and click blending options and so you're not going to go into any of these styles but if you can see here right on the main screen uh, where it says blend if gray that's what you're gonna be doing. That's what you're gonna be adjusting to get this realistic look. So you're not gonna need the top bar. That's not really necessary for this type of design. Um, that can be used, but this, it just doesn't work. Just, just leave that one alone. But so you're gonna be using the bottom one and you see that little triangle, you're gonna hold Alt and click on that. And so basically what that does is it splits the triangle and you're gonna grab the right side of the triangle and you're gonna bring it to the right. All right, you're gonna slide to the right. Um, depending on the picture and everything is gonna be how much you slide. But you can see the adjustments being, mean, being made live. Um, again, this can be a personal preference, how much glow and what looks realistic to you or what you're going for. But I usually keep it like, towards the beginning to middle and basically what this does is it takes away the lighting on the uh, black parts the dark parts of the design which gives it that more blending look that's why it's called blend if and it'll really make it look more realistic because lighting's not just going to completely cover all color below um, so here you can see i'm doing a little before and after here and this is something that is kind of necessary if you're going for that real look. Um, sometimes I'll also adjust the flow or the fill down a little bit of the entire layer, um, just to make it a little more realistic and not too overpowering. And then sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling, I'll do it on the rim light layer just to blend it a tiny, tiny bit more. Um, but you can see here that the lighting is pretty solid. Um, and then if you're going for like a complete lighting look rather than just glow um, What you're gonna want to do is pretty much the exact same thing add another uh, solid color layer with its own mask and I'm trying to show you here, but you're gonna go over the highlights that are more inwards because if you look at a real light, it's not just gonna carry on the outside it's going to go inside as well um so here i'm just doing the uh more inside highlights again i'm not taking too much time so it looks quite sloppy but i promise if you take your time it'll come out really good um i copied the layer where i already have a blend if done so It'll look a little bit better than if you just did a solid fill color layer and then set it to linear dodge add. But you can always adjust that after. And the best part about adjustment layers is that they're adjustment layers. You can go back whenever you'd like to fix them. Um, but so for like that arm down there with the creases on the armband, um, you can actually, if you see in the top left where it says feather, if you bring that up, it'll make the the brush strokes less harsh and kind of give it... It's a similar look to as if you were click uh, Gaussian Blur. It just kind of makes them less harsh, makes them blend in more. Um, but that's more for realistic lighting, like a full realistic lighting. 
Um, but again, that's all a preference thing, what you're going for. Maybe a manipulation, you'd do more of that. Um, and then here, what I like to do is I add a curves layer, make sure it's under the glow layers, the solid colors. And then I'll also clip that and then I'll grab it from the top right and drag it down just a bit. Again, depends on what you're going for. Um, but if a light is coming straight from your back, it's gonna make the front of you a little darker. That's just how lighting works. Uh, you know, go outside, test it out of your house, look at pictures, you'll see it. You'll learn more about how lighting actually works and why it works. Um, that's a really good exercise to learn realistic uh, lighting because sometimes it's not even the skill level on Photoshop. You just simply don't know how to do it um, or what it should be realistic. It'll take some time, just like anything in Photoshop, practice makes perfect. Understanding the reasons behind it is also very important. Um, if you guys want to see uh, the lighting more in a manipulation sense with real lighting, like sunlight and whatever, um, leave a comment. I'm more than happy to do that. This is more for just like a design, just to add a little bit more of an eye-catching element. Um, it's something I do quite a bit, I'm sure you guys have noticed but I think it's a nice little touch to make things look a little nicer um, rather than just having the glow behind them and then using a layer style to do an inner glow because uh, that covers the entire player. This is gonna be the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful and you guys can learn from this. Again, try things out. You can also try a hue and saturation layer. You can try a curves layer. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. Um, you just gotta experiment, see what looks best, what looks best for each design because everything's gonna look different um, depending on pictures, backgrounds, etc. But if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Drop a comment if you have any tutorial ideas that you'd like to see in the future. Next Saturday, I will be releasing a 3D text tutorial in After Effects with the Element 3D plugin. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that and I will be delivering. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next Saturday. Peace.